Away, good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television where we get you the biggest news stories that you might have missed overnight and also the stories that are likely to unfold in the day ahead. Let us start with the headlines. Last year of budget session of parliament, Lok Sabha spent 1% and Rajya Sabha 6% of its time on legislative work till now in the least productive budget session since 2000. Five ISR Congress MPs are to resign from Lok Sabha over the issue of Andhra Pradesh special status. BJP marks the 38th Foundation Day today. Prime Minister to interact with the party workers through video conferencing. Amit Shah to address a mega party rally in Mumbai. Nepal Prime Minister K.P. Sharma only to follow tradition to arrive in India on first international trip after assuming office. Massive confidence building exercise between two countries as Oli meets Prime Minister Modi in the evening today. Jodhpur court to take up actor Salman Khan's bail plea today. Actor spends night in jail after being sentenced to five years in prison in the 1998 Black Buck poaching case. And second goal for India at the Commonwealth Games in Australia. Weightlifter Sanjita Chanu wins in a 53 kilogram category. In a Davis Cup, a veteran Leander Pace looks to create record for the most doubles win. It is the last day of the budget session of Parliament and Rajya Sabha has spent only 6% of its time and Lok Sabha 1% of its time till now on legislative work in this part of the session. This is now turning out to be the least productive budget session since 2000. In the first half of the session, Lok Sabha worked for 89% of its scheduled time and Rajya Sabha worked for 96%. Repeated disruptions over multiple issues including the PNB fraud case, Andhra Pradesh special status, the Kaveri water issue and now the SCST Act have hit proceedings in both houses. And stalemate continued in the Rajya Sabha on a Thursday as disruptions by the opposition members continued unabated. Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu corrected Rajya Sabha records over the prevention of anti-corruption bill. Here are all the details. Chairman Naidu corrected the House records on Thursday. He stated that a bill to amend the Prevention of Corruption Act 1988 that was taken up in the House on 4th April was not passed by the Lok Sabha. The move came after Sukhendu Shekhar Roy of the TMC raised the issue through a point of order. Minister was allowed under the premises that it has been passed by the Lok Sabha, transmitted to the Rajya Sabha. But from the records it appears that this bill was introduced in the Rajya Sabha on 19th August 2013. Then this bill referred to Standing Committee on Law and Justice on August 23, 2013. Then on 6 February 2013, 14, Standing Committee submitted its report. Thereafter, the Select Committee was constituted on 11 December 2015 and the Select Committee given an extension on 29th of April 2016 and this Select Committee submitted its reports chaired by Mr. Bhupendra Jadav on 11th August 2016 and government introduced the bill on 4th April 2018. Therefore, the order passed by the chair allowing the minister to move the bill was under wrong right. devices and therefore he should recall that order. Right. He should recall that order. I got your point, Sukhenji. The prevention of the corruption amendment bill 2013 was introduced in Rajya Sabha 19th August 2013 as said by Sukhendra Raiji. The bill has been examined and replaced by the Senate Chairman by Rajya Sabha. The necessary Report. So correction has been carried, will be carried. However, as the members resumed protests what over several this? issues and disrupted the proceedings of the House, left? Chairman adjourned the House till 2 p.m. House is adjourned to meet at 2 p.m. today. Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV.
And the Prevention of Corruption Amendment uh, Bill 2013 could not be taken up by the Rajya Sabha on Thursday as well as the opposition continued to disrupt the proceedings. And post-lunch, the opposition members again came into the well, raising slogans and thwarting any attempts of the government to get the anti-corruption bill passed. The deputy chairman said that the Prevention of Corruption Amendment Bill 2013 was moved yesterday for consideration by a voice vote and a division was sought for amendments for which the House should be in order. On Wednesday, Minister of State for Personal, Public Grievances and Pensions, Jitendra Singh had moved the Prevention of Corruption Amendment Bill in the Rajya Sabha amid protests by the opposition members. The government said that the opposition is trying to weaken the fight against corruption. Allow voting in the division. So that let me come out of this deadlock. That is all what I am asking. Please allow this voting. Please go back and allow the voting. This has also reflected the duplicity of the honourable members who outside the house demand stringent measures against corruption. And when the Modi government moves forward in its resolve of zero tolerance towards corruption, they tend to disrupt the house. That nobody in the opposition is saying that there should not be any change in the law or no legislation. Opposition, opposition, it is a false accusation that has been made by the Honorable Minister just now and the word should be expunged. There is already a law against corruption. And Lok Sabha proceedings were washed out for the day yet again on Thursday. The United Opposition members raised a protest in the House after Parliamentary Affairs Minister Anand Kumar blamed the Congress for the stalemate in Parliament. Speaker Sumitra Mahajan informed the House that the names taken by Anand Kumar will not go on record. Earlier, leader of Congress in Lok Sabha, Malik Arjun Kharke, informed the House that the opposition wants to hold discussion on important issues. Amid a slogan chanting, the Speaker informed the House that no confidence motions would not be taken up uh, as the House was not in order. The question hour was also suspended due to the protest by AIADMK members demanding the formation of a Kaveri management board. सदन के अंदर गतिरोध पैदा करना असहिष्णुता दिखाना वहां लोकतंत्र का गला घोट देना और बाहर आकर के महात्मा गांधी जी के पुतले के सामने धरना प्रदर्शन कर, करने का एक ड्रामा करना यानी एक दिखावा करना ये कांग्रेस का आज के आजकल के राजनीति है and with the second half of the budget session heading for a complete washout, the NDA MPs have decided to forego their salaries for 23 days when no business was conducted in the House. The government said that the MPs of the ruling coalition are taking responsibility for the entire washout. Disruptions in both Houses of Parliament have washed out proceedings in the second half of the budget session. Owing to opposition protests, Parliament managed to pass only the finance bill and that too without discussion. With no business conducted in both houses, MPs of the ruling NDA have decided to forego their salaries and allowances for the 23 days in this session. No work, no pay. When we didn't do any work, the people of the car is not the only thing we have to do. और जो निर्णय पार्टी ने किया हम उसका स्वागत करते हैं और हम ये नैतिक जिम्मेदारी हम लोगों की है कि जब हम काम नहीं कर रहे हैं तो हमको वेतन नहीं लेना चाहिए। Taking salary those who have who have disrupted they may be feeling guilty and therefore not taking salary because it is widely believed that there were there are other people the allies of the ruling party which were disrupting. The opposition, however, is blaming the government for disruptions in the House. Parties claim that the government did not respond to the issues raised by them. Twenty-three days, we are ready to quit our salary if the government says Kaveri board will be formed. They have not allowed parliament to work and they suffer from a guilty consciousness. It is their problem. And in fact, as uh, uh, opposition, as CPI, we wanted parliament to transact uh, substantial uh, business. It's not the first time that MPs have decided to forego their salaries. 
although many of the MPs feel that running the house is also the responsibility of the government. Panchan and Mishra's report for Rajya Sabha Television. Meanwhile, five uh, YSR Congress MPs uh, will resign from the Lok Sabha today to protest against the alleged failure of the NDA government to grant a special category status to Andhra Pradesh. The MPs expressed outrage as notices for no confidence motion against the NDA government could not be taken up for discussion in the House due to continuous uh, disruptions. The party MPs also blamed Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Chandra Babu Naidu of disrespecting democracy for failing to keep uh, their promises to the people of Andhra Pradesh. And the government has uh, submitted a request to Hong Kong authorities uh, for provisional arrest of Nirav Modi in connection with the PNB fraud case. In a written response uh, to a question in the Rajya Sabha, the Minister of State for External Affairs, uh, V.K. Singh, informed uh, that the request was sent on the 23rd of uh, March last month. A provisional arrest is made uh, pending a formal extradition request. Singh also informed that the government suspended uh, Nirav Modi's uh, passports on 23rd of February ahead of an FIR that was registered against him by the CBI in the bank scam case. On to some other news, that on BJP's 38th Foundation Day today, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will interact with BJP workers of five Lok Sabha seats and with the presidents of the party's 734 district units via video conferencing. Prime Minister Modi will interact with BJP members from New Delhi, North East Delhi, Hamirpur in Himachal Pradesh, North Central Mumbai and Saran in Bihar constituencies through the Narendra Modi app. The Prime Minister will interact with party workers on a host of issues and will also answer their queries. In a series of tweets, Prime Minister Modi greeted each and every party worker on the occasion, calling them the heart and soul of the party. He also said that the party will continue to work towards creating a stronger and better India. And in Mumbai, BJP President Amit Shah will address a mega rally in Bandra today. The party was founded in 1980 in Mumbai. Earlier on Thursday, Amit Shah also chaired a meeting of the party's Maharashtra Unit Core Committee and discussed issues such as the expansion of the party's organizational base at the booth level and setting up of high-tech party offices in each and every district. In Breakfast News, we'll take a very short break. We'll be back with more news. Paper League hits the students' heart. Government strategizes to contain the league. How will the credibility of the examinations be restored? We find out the larger reasons of what has gone wrong with the education system. Watch the pulse, the anatomy of paper leak, Sunday 8 p.m. and Monday 2 p.m. only on Rajya Sabha Television. Welcome back after the break. The Reserve Bank of India kept its key lending rates unchanged in its first bi-monthly policy review for the current fiscal on Thursday, but it warned of fiscal slippages and surging crude oil prices. The Apex Bank also hinted at a good tiding for the economy as it expected India's economic growth rate to strengthen with the signs of revival in investment. It also predicted inflation to cool in the financial year 2018-19. The RBI on Thursday maintained status quo on its key short-term lending rates at the end of its two-day monetary policy committee meeting. Repo rate, the rate at which the central bank lends to banks, is kept at 6% and the reverse repo rate, the rate it pays banks for parking surplus funds, is maintained at 5.75%. The RBI projected economic growth of 7.4% for the current fiscal year that began on April 1st, again 6.6% in 2017-18. It also lowered its April-September inflation projection to 4.7% to 5.1% from February's 5.1% to 5.6%. Over the past two days, the Monetary Policy Committee 
review, reviewed evolving global and domestic macroeconomic conditions and decided to hold the policy repo rate at 6% while continuing with the neutral stance of monetary policy. Listing the green shoots in the economy, the RBI enumerated several factors that are expected to accelerate the pace of economic activity like revival in investment activity and an uptick in global demand that will encourage exports and boost fresh investment. Investment demand accelerated in the second half of 2017-18 and recent high frequency indicators point to some further strengthening with capital goods production registering a 19-month high growth in January of this year. Indian stock markets ended with strong gains on Thursday after the RBI cut the inflation forecast, triggering a rally in banking stocks and bonds. The Sensex surged 557 points to close at 33,596, while Nifty settled at 10,325. I think corporate India is ready to invest, ready to start taking risk. And uh, I think we are, we are now creeping back to not just normalcy, but back to growth. And a little bit of more encouragement from the government and from Reserve Bank in the coming months should really propel India's growth even further. The six-member RBI MPC voted five in one favour of maintaining the status quo. The RBI kept the interest rates on hold for the fourth straight meeting. The RBI also warned against rising trade protectionism and financial market volatility that could derail the global recovery despite growth and trade strengthening around the world. Reporting from Delhi, with counterperson Sanjay Kumar, I'm Kriti Mishra for Rajya Sabha Television. And in a major announcement yesterday, the RBI banned banks from providing services to any individual or business dealing in virtual currencies. The central bank has given banks three months to end all existing relationships with the Bitcoin players and has announced the introduction of its own cryptocurrency or fiat digital currency. An interdepartmental group has also been constituted to study and provide guidance on the desirability and feasibility to introduce a central bank digital currency and it will submit its report by the month of June. The RBI's move against cryptocurrencies came two months after Finance Minister Arun Jaitley termed cryptocurrencies as not legal in his budget speech. court will take up actor Salman Khan's bail hearing today. He was sentenced to five years in jail in the 20-year-old Black Buck poaching case. The court has also slapped a fine of 10,000 rupees on Salman Khan. The actor spent the night in jail following the conviction. Bollywood actor Salman Khan being taken to Jodhpur Central Jail. This was on a day the Jodhpur court sentenced him to five years in jail after convicting him in the Black Buck poaching case under the Wildlife Protection Act. The court also imposed a fine of rupees 10,000 on him. The conduct of the law has also been done in the past. The Wildlife Act has also been done in the past. The Hit and Run has also been done in the past. It has also been convicted. The court has also been done in the past. But the state's appeal is SLP. जो माननीय उच्चतम न्यायालय में विचाराधीन है तो इन सब परिस्थितियों को देखते हुए और उसके कंडक्ट को देखते हुए उसको अधिकतम सजा दी जानी चाहिए और उस पर न्यायालय ने विचार किया उसके बाद उसको पांच साल की सजा से दंडित बिश्नोई कम्युनिटी सेलिब्रेटेड वर्डिक दैट मार्क्स लॉन्ग लीगल फाइट ऑन द केस द डेट्स बैक टू अक्टूबर नाइनटीन नाइन्टी एट द कोर्ट ऑल्सो इक्विटेड ऑल दी अदर क्यूज इन द केस इंक्लूडिंग एक्टर सैफ अली खान तब्बू Neelam and Sonali Bendre and local resident Dushyan Singh giving them all the benefit of doubt. The Bishnoi community is now planning to appeal against the acquittals. The government has been reduced in the past, and why has it been reduced? After talking about it, we will talk about the government. And the people who are the government, they will get 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 the government. The court's verdict has left the film industry in shock. Salman Khan currently has four multi-crore films lined up including Race 3, Bharat, Kick 2 and Dabang 3. The fate of a TV game show, Das Kadam, to be anchored by him also hangs in balance. Look, for the film industry, for Bollywood and for all the people, there is a very big deal. Sanjay Dutt's case was like that. He was also given 5 years of prison. 
और आज एक और बड़े सुपरस्टार को पाँच साल की सज़ा हुई ये मुझे लगता है बॉलीवुड को इसका हरजाना जो है वो छेलना पड़ेगा बहुत बड़ा नुकसान है बहुत सारा पैसा उनके कैरियर पे लगा हुआ है द एक्टर वॉज फेसिंग चार्जेज ऑफ किलिंग टू ब्लैक बॉक्स इन अक्टूबर फर्स्ट नाइनटीन इन कंकनी विलेज नियर जोधपुर ड्यूरिंग द शूटिंग ऑफ द फिल्म हम साथ साथ हैं The prosecution says all the actors were in an open jeep that night that Salman Khan was driving. It was then they spotted a herd of deer and Salman shot at them killing two. The hearing on Salman's bail petition will take place on Friday. Bureau report Rajesh Abha TV. And India and Nepal will go into massive confidence building exercise when Nepal's Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli arrives on a 3 day visit to New Delhi today. Nepal is expected to assure India on New Delhi's security concerns at a time when China is trying to cozy up with all neighboring countries in a way that disturbs the organic bonhomie of South Asian nations. Maintaining tradition, Nepal Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli arriving in India for his first foreign visit after resuming office in February. He will meet Prime Minister Narendra Modi for an informal chat on Friday followed by summit level talks on Saturday. On the agenda are agreements relating to cooperation in infrastructure, roads, rail, hydropower, education, tourism, health facilities and other areas of development. Is sarkar ne और पूर्ववर्ती सरकारों ने जो वायदे किए हैं विकास और सहायता संबंधी वायदे उनको तत्काल पूरा करना चाहिए पहला ये कदम सबसे पहला कदम ये होना चाहिए और इसकी घोषणा करने के बजाय इस पर एक्शन करना चाहिए इसको लेके नेपाल में बहुत निराशा है आ, क्योंकि वो लोग सोचते हैं कि हम नेपाल का विकास होने नहीं देना चाहते हैं वायदे करते हैं ताकि वो विश्व बाजार में और सहायता क्लब्स में कहीं और से सहायता भी ना ले सकें और हम भी नहीं कर रहे हैं तो इसका बहुत ही बुरा परिणाम हो रहा है With China stepping up efforts to strengthen its relations with Nepal, India is looking at engaging with Nepal beyond diplomatic contacts. अगर वो बदलेंगे और चीन के करीब एक तरफा ढंग से जाते हैं भारत के विरोध में कोई षड्यंत्र का हिस्सा बनते हैं अंतर्राष्ट्रीय संबंध का तो भारत को जितना नुकसान होगा उससे ज़्यादा नुकसान खुद नेपाल को होगा और ओली जी इस बात को बखूबी समझते हैं India is already working on many projects in Nepal. They include the postal highway and Pancheshwar, check post in Birganj, Jogbani and rail links between Jogbani and Biratnagar, Tarai Road project, Hatoda Polytechnic and guest house for visitors in Pashupati Nath Temple in Kathmandu. China in turn is focusing on many connectivity projects. India is trying to emphasize that these projects can't override its security concerns because of the open border with Nepal. With open border, similar demography and culture, India and Nepal are immensely important for each other. They are not just two nations, they are members of the same family. There are high hopes that Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Prime Minister Oli will do something that can quell the differences and create a confidence among the people of the two countries. Akhile Suman for Raj Sabha Television with camera person Manoj in Delhi. And India has rejected reports suggesting a possible cooperation with China on Beijing's One Belt One Road venture or the Obor venture. The MEA said that India's position on Obor was clear and there is no change, asserting that no country can accept a project that ignores its core concerns on sovereignty and territorial integrity. Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Ravish Kumar in a statement said that connectivity initiatives must be based on universally recognized international norms, good governance, rule of law, openness, transparency and equality and that a so-called China-Pakistan economic corridor violates India's sovereignty and territorial integrity. His comments came in response to some media reports that India may refrain from opposing Obor in a blanket fashion for the time being. and limited its opposition to only china pakistan economic corridor ahead of this uh, sca summit that will be hosted by china in the month of june prime minister narendra modi would be attending the summit along with the leaders of other member countries
On the sporting action in India has bagged another gold on the second day of Commonwealth Games. Weightlifter Sanjita Janu won India's second gold in the women's 53 kilogram category at the 2018 Commonwealth Games in Gold Coast today. Sanjita started off with a lift of 81 kgs in snatch and her, in her second attempt she managed to lift 83 kilograms. She then broke the Commonwealth Games record set in Glasgow by lifting 84 kilograms in her third snatch attempt. Janu lifted a total of 192 kilograms, which included a Commonwealth record of 84 kilogram in snatch and 108 kilograms in key clean and jerk. This is the second Commonwealth gold for the Manipuri weightlifter who had struck gold in the 48 kg event in Glasgow four years back. And in more uh, sport, uh, sporting action, Leander Pace will uh, make uh, yet another attempt to create a Davis Cup record for the most doubles win. The attempt will uh, make uh, will make uh, he the attempt will be made as uh, India will clash with China at uh, the World Group Playoff uh, starting in uh, Tianjin in China today. 44-year-old Pace is tied on 42 wins with Italian great Nicole Pietrangeli and one more win will make him the most successful doubles player in the history of Davis Cup. Pace had a chance to make the record when India hosted New Zealand in Pune in February last year, but doubles was the only match that India lost in that tie. And that's it from me and my team in this edition of News. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day ahead.